What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning into yet another episode of Rocket Vlogs. Um, I'm sure you guys noticed the Build Sember builds tapered off a little bit there, as you might have expected with the holidays, but there is an explanation further as to why they did. Unfortunately, my dad and my sister, and potentially a couple other family members that live over with my parents, uh, contracted COVID-19. So... The majority of our rocket building stuff is at my parents' house, and naturally I'm staying pretty clear of that area because I got a test and came up negative, and I need to keep working, and a lot of my work involves going out and delivering food to people. So, I don't want to be uh, spreading COVID to people, so worry not, we will resume the builds that are happening over my parents' house, and I have a couple kits here that I can build, but I don't have the West Systems epoxies over my parents' house. That stuff's like $130 a gallon, so I don't have two sets of it like I do with the smaller, like, hobby epoxy stuff. So, there are a couple projects coming up, and uh, I'm happy to say we just got a very big part uh, for our very big rocket that's flying Airfest this year. Patreon supporters know about it, but I did just want to quickly take the time to thank all of you for watching and commenting and hitting the like button because that actually is really helpful to the YouTube algorithm. So feel free to tell me what you think, even if you think it's bad or whatever. If you don't like the way I'm doing something or you want to give me tips or pointers. I've been building rockets a long time, so I've developed a lot of, uh, you know, certain ways that I like to do stuff. But uh, it never hurts to have new information. So leaving comments is a big, big help. And uh, especially hitting the like button and subscription count is... Uh, a little more negligible but uh yeah this has been pretty crazy a couple years ago um i hadn't been to an argonia launch in forever and ldrs 38 was happening i'd never been to an ldrs before so i figured i need to go back to argonia and it's going to be ldrs so there's no better time for me to do it and for some reason i decided i was going to make uh like a documentary about it or not a documentary but a long format launch video because i was a really big fan of Rockets Magazine videos when I was younger, but I didn't have money to buy them. So, uh, I figured I wanted to go anyway. I didn't anticipate making any money off of it, but I wanted to make a video that sort of resembled the Rockets Magazine one. You know, put it out there for free, because there's probably a lot of kids that were, you know, my age, 13, 14, that their parents are involved with the hobby or something like that, and uh, they don't have the money to just, you know, buy videos and stuff like that not not that i'm saying i don't appreciate the people that do buy it but i always want to make for the most part stuff available for free so the public can view it so going into it i never expected that the channel would ever gain any traction or anything like that so it's pretty cool that it did i'm glad you guys are all here i love all the comments and everything and here we are two years later we're almost to 10,000 subscribers we're getting ready to give away that amw white wolf kit behind me not the built one the one that's behind me it's still unbuilt and yeah it's now i'm making videos for wild man as well if you haven't seen the wild man video i did on my mach 2 that's sitting right behind the camera actually um go check that out i did the build instructional video for him and he wants me to do some more stuff so we'll be doing that down the road as well um I really appreciate everyone watching, and every view counts, every like counts, and I especially appreciate those people on Patreon who are supporting me. I'm trying to give you guys as much behind-the-scenes content as I can, so uh, we're actually ordering some more stuff for our big air fresh project, and I'll keep you guys in the loop on that on Patreon. And a big thank you to those who have bought merch. Today is the very last day that you can get a uh, Just Keep Building Rockets shirt or pint beer glass go to rocketvlogs.com or I'll put the link in the description. I appreciate everybody who's bought those so far. We sold a pretty decent amount of them and that's going to go, like I said, straight back in the channel. Every dollar from merch, every dollar from channel, and every dollar from the Patreon goes back into the channel. I'm not pocketing any of it because if I did pocket it, it would just end up getting spent on rockets or cars anyway. So yeah, that's how it goes. Long story short, I want to say thank you guys for being here. And I'm looking forward to 2022. I hope you guys all have a happy new year and a great time. For those of you curious, my dad and everyone else that's got COVID at my parents' house, is they all are vaccinated. So they're all very experiencing very mild cases and they're doing fine. I know people will probably be concerned. I appreciate that, but they are okay. It's not a joke.
People do get it and people do die from it. At any rate, um, I wanted to do one last video where we at least start a build. I don't know how far I'm going to get on this today, but uh, my generous Secret Santa over at the Rock Drew Forum, Secret Santa, not only bought me a lock 4-inch T-lock kit, but they upgraded it to 38 millimeter for me. And this is perfect because I think we might be able to get away with making this thing light enough that we can fly it at parks. And, um... Yeah, I mean, it says F20 is one of the recommended motors, right? So, you would think we'd be light enough. And I guess we'll see. I'm going to build it as light as possible. But, uh, yeah, this would be great park flyer on G motors. Or, with the 38, we can go all the way up to an H, I, maybe even a J. I think a, I think a J would do okay in it. Maybe something a little tame like the J350. Probably not J500 or J570. But, at any rate... We're going to do this uh, cardboard building rocket thing one more time for 2021, and uh, thank you guys for watching. Let's get to it. All right. First step is business as usual, sanding all the stuff that's going to get bonded, but we're just going to start with the motor tube for now. Alright, let's see if these other rings want to go on, no, as usual I'm going to just use the fin as a guide for where this ring should be, and move it down a little bit, that should be plenty tight enough for what we're doing. And you can see the big gap there between the ring is obviously more than a tube because this is a 29 millimeter kit and we're putting a 38 millimeter mount in it. What's actually interesting is I'm doing this on a bigger scale soon because I have a full scale HV Arcus that uh, I'm upgrading to 98 millimeter that we're going to do tip to tip carbon fiber on. So that's going to be pretty crazy. We just slide these rings around. We got our marks. We need the top one on. Cool. Where that goes doesn't really matter. Okay. Now, before I glue stuff, I'm going to use this guy, switch it to inches, 1.61, okay, One point two. So that's going to give us 0.41 is the difference, 0.41 inches is the difference between the outside diameter of the 29 millimeter motor tube versus the outside diameter of the 38. And we're gonna divide that by two, la 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 la. That equals 0.2 five so we're gonna do point two because we don't need to get to the thousands so that puts us just a hair over three sixteenths of an inch is how much we're gonna have to take off of each fin because obviously we divided by two because the fin tab is only going to be half of that so like I said from the beginning it should be about a quarter inch it's just a little under a quarter inch about a sixteenth under a quarter of an inch well, less than that, I don't know. I was going to do this whole build with uh, wood glue, the tight bond quick and thick stuff, because that is an old technique. You build high power rockets with wood glue and they do just fine. But I wanted to get this thing assembled relatively quick. So I opted not to do that instead. Um, it is possible and maybe we can get our hands on another kit. I actually have an Estes kit uh, behind the camera. I like to do this, by the way, um, just try not to get any on the threads, but I don't like I just did. 
The biggest advantage of doing wood glue is that it's water soluble. So it's a great first time builder's uh, adhesive. So there's actually an SD's kit behind you that I might order some thin upgrades for. And um, then we can put that together with wood glue just so I can demonstrate it. I want to build a big rocket with wood glue just because I know it'll work. Wood glue is stronger than the wood you put it together. You're putting together with it and it bonds to cardboard and it bonds to cardboard really well. Another thing I really want to do is I want to build a fiberglass rocket using only CA and fly it on maybe a J or a K because I think people kind of underestimate how strong CA is too. So it'd be kind of fun just to try and prove a point. When I glue rings in, I like to go pretty heavy and push them up the opposite direction where they'll be going because as you can see, it kind of creates a nice little fillet there for you. Now, I don't particularly care where this ring winds up, but we're just gonna get it to a spot where it's on straight, which is right about there. And the nice thing about all these rings being so tight is that, uh, they're not going to go anywhere while they're drying. We came to the conclusion that we need it 0.2 inches on the fins. So we're gonna pull out our caliper to 0.2. Okay. We're going to use the caliper. Pointy tips to mark 0.2 inches. Then what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a straight edge and draw a line from mark to mark. That's how much we need to cut off to make this a 38 millimeter kit. So we're gonna repeat this process. Our other marks for reference on our other fins. And I do not have a saw with a fine enough blade handy to me right now to cut this. So I think I'm just gonna take them outside and cut it with a Dremel cutoff wheel. All right, my cuts were pretty straight. There's just a few corrections that need done there. So I taped all the fins together. So you can see the tops there are all level. That way we can sand these all to be even. I already glued the motor tube in the rocket. You guys have seen me do that a bunch of times. You put the shock cord in the motor tube and all that, and then put the motor assembly in there. It's done. This is the new stuff you guys haven't seen before. Let's see if we did the math right. Fin slots are a little tight fitting. Hey, look at that, that's pretty close. There's still a little bit of a gap there. That'll be that 5,000th of an inch. It actually looks like it's maybe about a 30 second. Um, I'll keep sanding them, get them a little closer. I'm gonna do them one by one though. What I love about the plywood that Locke uses is when you sand it like this, the surface is so smooth and nice. Particular fin slot's gonna need a little sanding itself. We'll do this guy. There we go. Hey, look at that. Rocket science, baby. All right, hopefully the camera doesn't die because I'm not gonna have time to adjust it. I'm about to do a high power rocketry stunt right in front of the camera. I'm gonna use five minute epoxy and glue all three fins on at once. This fin shape makes it there's a lot of surface area. You can put pieces of tape on it. If there was four fins, we might run into a bit of an issue, but because there's three, I think we got this. I'm keeping the fins in those slots right now because those are the ones I know they fit in for sure. Because five minute epoxy, as the name might lead you to believe, only gives you about five minutes to work with. And we'll run, the well's running dry over here. All right, clocks are ticking.
I'd say that looks pretty dang good. Now I'm really gonna show off. I'm gonna use that epoxy to glue the bulkhead. This is where we're gonna lose time. This is a cute little eye bolt. Don't worry about the shock cord. There's a quick link. Yeah. Eighth inch bulk plate. Not a lot of glue surface area there. Is not over here, so here's what we're gonna do. That'll lock the threads up, huh? Ooh, it's getting tacky. He's turning yellow. Can I get it done? Well, it's all over, boys. What ain't happening? It was a valiant effort. It's all right, it's still a little tight in there, so it gives me a second to mix this up. But hey, all the fins are on and they're straight, so that's cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, these fins are dry. We're gonna take these guys off. While the camera was charging a little bit, I went ahead and glued the bulkhead into the coupler. So now what we're gonna do is get the quick link out of here. Pull out our shock cord. Get that on there. Now these being on would make the fillets a bit of a pain, but we are going to put them on just for the sake of it looking correct. It is a T-lock after all, so without having the T-portion on the fins, it wouldn't look quite so right. Honestly, I could probably glue these on and still do fillets pretty easily, but we're going to save that for another day. So I have to edit this video and upload it so that anybody that might be interested in buying the JKBR merch will still have a chance. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me pan the camera out a little bit. It's a lock precision four inch T-lock kit built for the most part in about an hour. One more time, I wanna thank you guys all again for making this year so awesome. I wouldn't have been able to do as much traveling as I did if it weren't for your guys' presence and being here and everybody supporting the Patreon and everything else. Thank you guys very much. And uh, for the last time in 2021, we're signing off for the Rocket Vlogs video and our last build video of 2021. Please make sure you're subscribed, leave a comment, and hit the like button, and I will see you guys next time.